Well, it's supposed to start at 12.15, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. You see why my alarm didn't go off? I uh, normally set an alarm to mark the beginning of the class session and the end of the class session, and I sure didn't set one. I forgot. <laughs> anyway, the car, it's 12.15, time to start. I'm going to leave that door open for a little while anyway because there may be people who are trying to find their way over to the classroom in the, on the first class session. But ordinarily what I'll do as soon as that alarm goes off is walk over there and shut that door and we hit the ground running through the class sessions, okay? Because there's just a lot. In these government courses, both this course, the Texas government course and the federal government course, they are just cram packed. It's a, they're very ambitious courses, as I like to describe a lot to cover. So um, anyway, I, I try to I try to be pretty good about marking the beginning of the class and being punctual, and then the end, the end as well. Now I will say about the end of the class session, when that alarm goes off at 1:30, and the class session is over at 1:30, uh, that's a cue to me to shut it down. Okay, uh, and I ask you to. Uh, give me the courtesy of not just springing out of the classroom as soon as that alarm goes. It's not like a look, bells in high school. Do they still have bells in high school? Okay. You know, I, I can still remember, this was a long, long, long time ago, but I can still remember when I was in high school and that bell would go off in the class session, people would be talking out of the door. Okay? Um, anyway, I may be in the middle of a sentence. I may be in the middle of a thought that I just need to finish up. I, I do try to, you know, be discipline myself about winding things up pretty quickly once that alarm goes off, okay? What it also means though, and we'll touch on this again here in just a second, is that you won't need your phone in this class session, okay? If you bring a, if you bring a phone with you to the classroom on Thursday, Tuesdays and Thursdays, I ask that you power it off, okay? Um, again, it's, it's in the syllabus we're going to look at here in just a second, but you won't need to refer to your phone to you know keep the time or whatever. They don't have clocks in these classrooms, which strikes me as odd. But there's a clock on the computer uh, if you if you want to know at any given time. Okay, so we got a lot to do in today's class session. We're going to go through the course syllabus and talk about course requirements and course policies and all that sort of stuff. Uh, that will actually take a good chunk of a class meeting to do that. If the 10:50 class was any indication. Uh, hopefully we'll have some time, at least a little bit of time, to start covering some material at the end of the class session, okay? So um, first thing I need to do, though, is make sure that everybody's in the right place, okay? Uh, this is Texas Government 2306. This is the course number 22368. Uh, meets on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 12.15 to 1.30. Everybody think they're in the right spot? Okay, good. Um, I call the names on the class roster every Tuesday and Thursday because that's my understanding of college policy that we're supposed to do that. I don't know if my colleagues do that or not, but it's pretty clear. College policy is pretty clear we're supposed to do that. So this is a pretty small class. Uh, I think we got 11 people on the roster, so it shouldn't take very long to do that. Okay, so let's do that here real quick. By the way, my name is William Fagan. I don't know if when you sign up for classes, if you pay attention to who the faculty member is or not. I assume that people do, but I don't know, maybe not. Uh, this is my uh, let's see. Let me do some arithmetic real quick. This is my uh, 36th year teaching college level political science courses at one institution or another. I've been uh, at WCJC since fall semester of 2013. Before that, I was a very long time at a place called Temple College in Central Texas, but I've also been at various other colleges and universities over that period of time. I think I did that arithmetic. But let's see, the first time I walked into a college classroom as a faculty member was fall semester 1984. Is that 36 years? Yeah, I'm old. <laughs> okay, uh, let me do this real quick. I'm going to make my best attempt to pronounce your name. If I mess it up, please correct me, and I'll work on getting it right in the future. By the way, if, you have, if there's something you prefer to be called, other than the name that's on the roster, let me know, and I'll put it in there, and I'm happy to call you that. Okay? Um, Aresli Ayala? Araceli. Araceli. Okay. 
Yeah, you said that right. Okay. Miles Busby. Okay. Christian Bustamante. Philippe Bizon. Kara Dwight. Kara. Taylor Haman. Is that right, Haman? Heyman. Heyman. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, you can tell me. I might be tempted to pronounce it wrong for a couple of times, so just remind me. Heyman. Kyle Green, or Keen, I'm sorry. Is it Xavier or Javier? Neither. Arian Rodriguez? Okay. And uh, you, Nguyen Vasquez? Not here? Is there anybody whose name I didn't call? I registered for this class yesterday, so. Okay. Tell me what your name is, and I'm going to put you in here, but, um, and, and I'll update the class rosters hopefully before we come back on Thursday. If you're not on the class roster on Thursday, we need to find out why. Sure. Okay. Uh, Joshua Nieto. How do you spell it? N-I-E-T-O. Okay. It's E-T-O. Oh, E-T-O. Yes, sir. The first name is Joshua? Yes, sir. I saw your name on, uh, are you in another class? Are you enrolled in another class? Are you in the federal government course? No, I, do you I have was a family? enrolled in a different class, and then I, my schedule changed, so I dropped it. In, oh, okay. In uh, I just, the name looked familiar to me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Same thing. What? I, I, I okay, what's your last name? Uh, Garcia Christopher. Are you in the federal government course? Yeah. Were you in the one that just ended? Uh, um, I was in the previous semester on one. Christopher, you said, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, federal government course. Wow, that was hard. And that, was, uh, that was long. It was a lot of the book and chapters. What is your What is your name? Kyle. You weren't in my class, though, right? No, oh, okay. no, I did it on Mars, but it was, just, it was just a lot of textbooks. I, I freely admit, I, uh, I freely offer uh, my perspective on these courses. I think they are challenging courses. I think both the federal government course and the Texas government course are challenging courses. And one of the reasons I think that, well, there's several reasons. One that I was going to, the immediate one that came to my mind is that they're what we call survey courses which means that we have to cover a lot of stuff in a fixed period of time. 16 weeks sounds like a long time when you're at the beginning of the semester, yeah. but it is not when you get to the end of the semester. And I find myself from a faculty perspective, I think I would also find it this way if I was a student in the course, I, I find myself wishing that we had more time. <laughs> you know, like We just don't have the opportunity to get into the kind of detail that I would like for students that, that, that I think promotes better learning. So it's kind of like a little sampling. We're sampling this, we're sampling that. We'll look at the syllabus here together in just a second that'll be a little clearer what I mean by that. But uh, the point is that we, you know, because we don't have the time really to devote, because we have so much to cover, we don't have the time to devote to, you know, more narrow things. It can be kind of challenging. It was just like, yeah, like the last year I had was just like, it was just straight, like read this chapter, this chapter, and let's do the over this chapter. It was, it was hard to learn. Like yeah, you have to, you have to, um, I don't think online learning is for everybody. And um, that may be exactly why you all decided to roll, enroll in the face-to-face -face classes now that they're available again. I don't blame you. I prefer to be in the classroom too. Uh, online is good for some things. It's not good for all things. And it's good for some people and not good for all people, right? So. Welcome back. For those of you who were, who were wanting to be back on campus, you're here, and uh, maybe it's a maybe it's a, a, a setting that's a, a little more comfortable for you. Okay. Uh, so what we're going to do in today's class session is, um, and I, I what I'm doing uh, with these Tuesday Thursday class sessions is I'm uh, live streaming them to people in my online classes so they can get that experience. Not all of them want to be in those those uh, online classes, they'd rather have face-to-face -face classes as well. But uh, So I see that there's at least one person, well, no, there's there's five people who, um, it says five, oh, I guess I'm one of them. There's four people from the, from the online class. Can you all hear me? 
Yes, sir. Yeah, I tell you what, raise your hand if you can hear me. Okay, good. Good, thank you. Make sure you lower it after you finish. Okay? And can you see me okay? Okay. So, just for, for the benefit of those of you in my face to face class, I'm really just kind of doing this. This is as an experiment. I, I don't, you know, it's certainly not going to distract from what we do in this class, but I wanted to give these people an opportunity to get the live experience if that's what they want. Yes, sir. It's like, it's like way off, but I was going to have to miss a class at down in April or in April. So, for that class, for that specific day, can I, because I'll be able to. Let's talk about that again. My, my quick answer is, and I hate to do this on the first class meeting of the semester that you asked, is say like my inclination is to say no, but let's let's wait until we get closer down to that point in the semester. I may change my mind on that. If, if you must have an answer right now, I'm going to say no, but um, we'll see. Please, One of the things I don't want to do is I don't want to make recorded class sessions generally available to you guys. And there's some really good reasons for that, not the least of which is I got to have an there's got to be an incentive for you guys to come to class. Okay, okay. Uh, let me see what that. I'm here. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. So you guys can see me as, as well, then I, I, I'm guessing, right? Okay. Yes. So what we're going to do with today's class session is um, we're going to talk quite a bit about how the course is set up, how it's organized, what the course requirements are, what you've got to do to pass the course, all that kind of stuff. And then, as I said, we may have, I, I'm planning that we have time at the end of the semester to break ground on material. Okay? So let's jump right in. Um, how many of you um, have never used Blackboard before? Anybody in my face-to-face -face class here? That I know the people who are online have because they're online on Blackboard, right? Mm -hmm. Any of you who ever used Blackboard before? You all know how to get to Blackboard and how to log into Blackboard, right? Okay, good. All the courses that are offered at the college now, whether they are on, obviously online courses or something called a hybrid course, but now even the face-to-face -face classes are what we call web enhanced. And one of the things that we use Blackboard for, the main thing that we use Blackboard for, for the face-to-face -face classes is, um, well, there's two things, okay? One is to disseminate documents like the course syllabus, because I've been committed a long time to not passing out paper in class. But now that we're in this COVID thing, the college is really big on not passing out paper. You know? So you're going to have to go out to the course website in order to get course syllabus and other documents. Okay? The other thing that we're going to use Blackboard for in the face-to-face -face class is um, the core competency assessment, which I'll talk about here in more detail, okay, in just a bit, all right? So you do need to know how to get into Blackboard. You do know how to, uh, you do need to know how to find your way around Blackboard, the Blackboard course website, to find the things that you need. And there's also the possibility, and I have a little blurb about this in the syllabus, uh, it's not a zero probability, I don't think it's a very high probability, but it's certainly not zero, that for some reason we have to transition back to online. Nobody expected it last March, right? Who's gonna, who knows what's going to happen you know, in February or March or, or whatever. I don't think that's going to happen. But, it's, as I said, it could happen. Uh, and you need to be already familiar with Blackboard and how to maneuver around Blackboard just in case. Okay? All right, so when you log into Blackboard, you're going to see your list of courses under my courses. I think it looks different depending on the device that you're using. It doesn't look the same on a phone as it does on a laptop computer or a desktop computer, I think. It also may depend on the browser that you're using. Uh, I encourage you strongly when you're doing your coursework, uh, whether you are in a face-to-face -face class like this one or an online, fully online class, uh, don't do your work on a phone. Okay? I think you're inviting trouble. Uh, you know, if you use a desktop computer or a laptop computer, that's my, for whatever it's worth to you, my advice. That's not based on, I'm certainly not an expert on these, you know, devices and these systems and so on. It took me forever to get something called a smartphone. Right? This is an iPhone 5S. <laughs> and I only got it about two years ago. I can it about two years. Um, 
for, for the longest time, I was still doing the flip thing. That, that's the old Star Trek communicator thing. That, um, anyway, it's not because I don't know about technology. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not uncomfortable with technology. I'm certainly not an expert on it either. But um, it, it's you know just personal preferences, I guess. Okay. Anyway, you'll see your list of courses. Now, notice on the screen what you're looking at. These are all my courses. Okay. So they all say government. Yours aren't going to all say government. Every course that you're taking, whether it's biology or English or chemistry or math or go, uh, government or history, whatever you're taking is going to appear here. Okay. Obviously, you need to find the one that says Texas government. I have to find the right one that says Texas government. Here it is. Okay. When you click on this link to Texas government, you're going to see the home page for the Texas government course. Have this montage over here. Down below that is a link for announcements. You need to stay on top. You know, log into Blackboard fairly regularly to see if there, at least, if there are any new announcements out there for you. Okay. Um, I obviously in a face-to-face -face class I make announcements in class, but we don't meet on a daily basis, right? And in fact, there's a five-day period between our Thursday class and our Tuesday class. So if something comes up when we're not in class, I'm going to put an announcement out there. Okay? No, no, these, these announcements don't go to your email. Right? The college wants us to, um, you know, for, for the first six years that I was here at WCJC, again, starting in fall semester of 2013, the um, company line was, Students must use their WCJC email to interact with faculty, right? COVID changed that. Now they want you to interact with faculty through the course messages system in Blackboard, right? So there's a link right here on the homepage, the very last link over here in this navigation train. It's just an internal email system, right? But those announcements that I'm talking about, they don't go to your email. They do not go through course messages. They do not go through course messages. Oh. Either, either course messages or email. Oh, it'll be either or? No, they own It's neither. Oh. It's neither. They, they show up right here. OK? Oh, so if you click on here, like here are the announcements. And that's what I'm saying you need to read. Sometimes I do send out course messages, but I only use the course messages to talk to individual students. OK? By the way, if, your fa if a family member sends you a course message, does it do you, are you aware of it because of this little thing up here? Is that what tips you off that there's a course message there? I have 136 notes. <laughs> I think it's the uh, there's updates. There's a lot of your updates. Well, lots of, a lot of it, from, you know, these are going to be updates. But I think this is also where your course message, see, look, I got one here from a student, right? Course message. This is where they appear. So if you ever see a number up here in red, that means somebody has sent you a course message. Or you might, you might have gotten an update from the distance education staff or something like that. So you need to look at those too. That's all I'm really trying to get to. You need to look at those. Okay? All right. Um, where was I? Let me go back. Oh, this is really slow today. Look at that. Okay, so. For the face-to-face -face class, for those of you who are in my online class and are sitting in, it's different, okay? Over here on the left-hand side of the screen, I call this the navigation pane. I'm not sure what the distance education staff calls it. I call it the navigation pane, right? In the online class, there's going to be a bunch of links here as we go throughout the semester. For you guys in the face-to-face -face class, this is probably, I don't, right now, I don't know of anything else that will be linked up out here. Okay, there may be something I'll let you know, okay? But the main link for you right now is this one, Course Documents. So I'm going to click on that here in just a second. But notice there's also a link here to virtual office hours, which means that, um, you know, even if we're not in the same room at the same time, you know, like you sitting there and me sitting here, uh, as, you know, individually having some sort of consultation, uh, you can do that virtually, like a Zoom meeting, right? 
Um, so that's where you that's what you would click on to get to that. Okay. You can check my schedule of office hours, and I have that virtual office open while I'm sitting in my office over in Richmond. So that I have that open. Okay. So you don't actually have to come and knock on my door on the Richmond campus. You can come into that virtual office. Okay. All right, and then here's a link uh, that says core competency assessments. There's nothing there right now, but I am my goal is end of the day tomorrow. By the end of the day tomorrow, you'll have the information on the core competency assessments. I'll say more on that here in just a minute when we talk about course requirements. Okay, and then here's a link that says final exam information. We do have a comprehensive final exam in this course, and already from day one of the semester, I have some guidance for you out here. You know what I mean by a comprehensive final exam, right? Test you over the breadth of the course, everything that's covered in the course. And I already said this is an ambitious course. So I provide this document in, a help, in an effort to help you manage how you prepare for the final exam. Okay? Uh, and I'll probably remind you that that document's out there from time to time during the semester. And certainly as we get down towards the end of the semester and the final exam is becoming imminent, it's looming, I'll, I'll remind you that that document's out there. Okay? But for those of you who are really on top of things, know that it's out there from the very beginning. And you can use it from the very beginning to manage your preparations for the final exam. That's something you really should do throughout the course of the semester. Don't wait until the very end of the semester to begin preparing for the final exam. <clears throat> okay. All right, so as I said, um, there's not a whole lot out here right now. This link is to course grades. Every time you have something that you, you know, you do some work and I grade it, this is where you come to see your grade, okay? We will be doing some discussion boards in here, so more on that in just a second. And then this is the internal email system. Course messages is the internal email system to Blackboard, okay? You want to send me a message by email? You don't want to come to the, or you can't come to the virtual office, or you, whatever it is, you can't call me on the phone, or you just prefer to do it by email, you can do that, okay? There are some disadvantages, though, to asynchronous communication. I want to encourage you to use the virtual office. I think that's, if we're not sitting together in a room together, talking face to face, I think the next best thing is, you know, that Zoom type meeting, okay? <clears throat> email, you know, it's sometimes it takes forever to clarify a point. Right? I gotta, you gotta write your email, and then I gotta read it and respond to it. However long that takes me, and then you gotta read my email, and however long that takes you to do that, you know. And if it takes a, you know, trading four or five emails to clear up a point or to fully answer a question, it may be several days after the initial email. <laughs> you know how it works. Right? I'm not sure that that's the most efficient way to operate. Okay, uh, let's back up here. As I said, this is right now, and for you guys in the face-to-face -face class, this is going to be the main link in Blackboard. I already have several documents out here for you. Okay, I'm going to just touch on these here real quickly, and then I'm going to come back and we're going to look at the syllabus together in some depth. Okay. This appears on all courses in Blackboard at WCJC, this copyright notice. Okay? There's the link to the syllabus. Um, this document here, the schedule of availability of learning materials and due dates for graded work, that appears at the end of the syllabus, at the very last couple of pages of the course syllabus. I just took that part of the course syllabus, lopped everything else off, and created a separate document for easier, quicker reference for you. You can go out here, you want to know when certain things are due, you can come out here and look at that. Okay? Here's a document that says instructions for weekly discussion posts. I'm going to encourage you strongly to read that right out of the gate here this semester because we're going to be doing, as I said, these weekly discussion boards. Talk more about that here in just a second. Here's a link that you need. You need to take care of this as soon as you possibly can, right? After this class session is over, okay, sometime really very soon, 
within hours, <laughs> I would encourage you to go out and get a copy of the course syllabus. You know, open up the course syllabus, download it if you want to. Some people like to print it out. Great. Read through it. Okay. Become familiar with how all the course requirements, all that kind of stuff. And then the next thing is do this receipt of course syllabus acknowledgement form. How many of you took online classes previously? So, uh, you know that little form that you do in the online classes to yeah. say you got a syllabus? They want us to do that in the face to face classes now. Again, they don't want us to pass out paper. So, we're going to do that, have you do that on Blackboard. Okay? It's, a, it's set up like a quiz. It's just a little one question quiz. And I even give you the correct answer. Okay? And I don't want you, it's not, gonna, it's not a quiz, it's not going to count towards your course grade. It's just that's the only way to set it up in Blackboard. Right? So, you just have to click on that answer that says, I've received the course syllabus, et cetera. I understand, blah, blah. The college requires that we do that. This is not my requirement, it's the college's requirement. Okay? Honesty, integrity, and uh, online and face to face classes, please read over that. This next link says suggestions. I'm going to close this door now. Suggestions for taking notes during class sessions. Okay, so let me, let me digress here for a moment and explain to you how this video came to be. I was teaching a class several years ago in this building in a room upstairs that was used for what we called our interactive television, interactive TV classes, ITV classes. So I had a class, a group of students with me in the classroom upstairs here on the Sugar Land campus. There was another group sitting in a classroom out of, out of the Wharton campus. There was another group sitting in a classroom out of the Richmond campus. And then I had a couple of high schools that we did dual credit with that were sitting in classrooms on their, on their uh, school campuses. And it was just all one big class. We were doing my interactive TV. And I don't remember what the topic was for that class. It was pretty late in the semester. Uh, I would lecture on something. And I just kind of looked around and I noticed that no one was taking notes. You know, it's like, I, and I was kind of surprised by that. It's not that I had never noticed that before. Like I said, I've been doing my job for a long time at one place or another. And over the years, that's become an increasing phenomenon where many students come and they just don't take notes, right? But I had never really, it never really dawned on me before that there was no one taking notes. There was nobody in the classroom with me on the Sugarland campus that was taking notes. There was nobody, I looked on the television screen, I looked at the Richmond campus, nobody taking notes, nobody on the Wharton campus taking notes, nobody on the high school campus taking notes. And I just thought, I gotta stop what I'm talking about here and talk about taking notes. <laughs> because I'm convinced, again, I've been doing this job a long time, I'm not, I'm not a teacher by trade, right? I didn't, my education and background is not in theories of learning or educational theory or educational techniques or anything like that. My degrees are not out of the College of Education. I'm a political scientist and economist by education and training, as most college professors are. They're you know, not like teachers in the public schools and high school where they have a lot of background in educational theory and stuff like that, or some background in educational theory. I'm an expert on American politics and other aspects of political science and political economy. I'm not an expert on learning, okay? Now, I've been doing it a long time, so I've picked up some things by experience and by intuition, okay? And one of the things I'm absolutely convinced of is that to do well in this course, and I think in many, 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 many college courses, one of the skills that you really need to hone is taking good notes. It's like anything else to get good at something. You got to practice it. It doesn't come naturally to a lot of people. As I like to say, it's like shooting free throws. Right? Or, or any of you musicians? What's your instrument? Saxophone. Saxophone. I don't know much about wind instruments. No know more about string instruments, but maybe it's true with the saxophone as well. Uh, when you were, did you get, did you just pick it up? Like on your own, or did you take some lessons? I had 
Awesome. And did you have to learn scales? Yeah. And is learning scales fun? It's drudgery. It's drudgery. Learning scales on the piano, learning scales on the guitar, the violin, or whatever is not the funnest thing in the world that you're going to do. But you can probably testify to the fact that if you learn to play those scales, and you learn that well, you get that down, it pays off a lot. Oh, yeah. It pays off a lot. And that's what I'm saying about note taking. It's not something that comes naturally to a lot of people. Um, I've seen people who take really good notes. I've seen people who take really terrible notes. Okay, but I'm convinced that if you learn to take good notes, it increases the chances that you can do well in the course. So that's what happened in this class. I just paused for a second, talked to them for about well, 10 or 11 minutes, whatever that says up there, about taking good notes. And so. Because it was an interactive TV course and it was being recorded, I just took that session and locked off what was before it and locked off what was after it. 10, 11 minutes of video interaction there and uploaded it to YouTube and now embedded the link here for you in case you think there might be something in there that you can use. You don't have to look at this video. You don't have to. You know, I'm not going to check to see who looked at it and who hasn't looked at it. But if you think that you might be able to, there might be something in there that you can use that will help you become a good note taker. I'm telling you, based on my many, many years of experience, that I think that's a skill that pays off in this course. Hopefully, as we continue talking today, that it'll, and as we go through the semester, it will become clear why that's the case. Okay, so anyway, that's out there for you. It will remain out there the entire semester. Okay? I've been putting it on my, embedding that into the Blackboard site for every course since like 2016. Okay, let's take a look at the course syllabus together. As I said, this is the main document right now, really throughout the semester for you guys. And uh, for those of you in the online class, it looks the same, but the specifics are a little bit different, not in terms of course requirements, but in terms of how things are carried out, how things are implemented, might, might be a little bit different. So I'm talking specifically to the people now in the face-to-face -face class, because this is their class meeting. And those of you who are online with us right now um, in, uh, in the uh, Blackboard and the Collaborate, um, you will uh, you will understand that uh, you need to go out and make sure that you understand the specifics of what is in your your course syllabus. Okay. So let me do this here real quick. For some reason, this is not responding. Click on the the square. Oh, thank you. It was grayed out. I should have picked up on that. All right, uh, folks. Uh, hopefully, you can see my screen now. Uh, let me well, let me do this. What do you see on the screen out uh, on for the online folks? What do you see? Do you see this the syllabus that says face to face? Yes. Okay. Thank you. All right. So again, yours is going to be different in some respects. You need to read over it very carefully. All right. So. This first page is the cover sheet. It's on every course syllabus. The details are, the specific information is different, but the look is the same in every, on every syllabus in the college offers. So again, I'm just going to touch on some things real quick. Here's my office hours. Okay. And notice I've indicated here that, you know, where my office is over on the Richmond campus. I also have some um, office hours limited office hours on this campus. It's mainly before the 1050 class on Tuesdays and Thursdays and after this class on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So for those of you who are sitting in this classroom, the class session ends and you want to ask a question, fair game, you know, we're moving to office hours at that point. Okay? That actually works out kind of convenient for you. And for the people in the 1050 class, they can, you know, meet with you before. Okay? 
All right, so uh, anyway, you can also do, as I said, the Blackboard thing, the, the Collaborate thing. Um, here's a brief description of the course from the course catalog. Uh, the grading formula is listed there. Again, you can read over all this stuff, the attendance policy, the ADA statement, the misconduct statement. The last day to drop this course or any 16-week course with a grade of W is way off into the future, way down the road. We give students lots and lots of time to make that decision. Um, back in the day, back in the day, you know, you had like three or four weeks into the semester that you had to make that decision. That's probably an exaggeration, maybe more like midterm. But it's it's pretty late in the semester these days that you can that you can drop a semester uh, drop a course. Okay, next, uh, the communication policy. Uh, again, I'm not going to read all this to you. You can read it on your own. But basically, what it says is there are several ways you can communicate with me. You can meet with me in person during office hours, as I just said. You can meet with me in virtual office hours as they're posted on the schedule of office hours in the uh, Collaborate uh, virtual office. Or you can send me course messages through the course messaging system here. But again, that's not synchronous. That's not live, right? Okay. Uh, you can also call me on the telephone. The thing about the telephone is I know your generation doesn't like to use the telephone. Frankly, I don't either. I've never liked even before more modern modes of communication. Like the worst thing back in town, back in the days of old landlines, people would be sitting in their house watching, you know, the nightly news or something like that, and the phone would ring. And even before, I can remember before voicemail. See how old I am? There, there used to be a time when there was no such thing as a, a voice answering machine. <laughs> I can remember that. So the phone would just ring, 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 until you either went and picked it up or the person gave up. My practice was to wake people out so they would just give up. <laughs> I don't like talking on the phone. I never like talking on the phone. Uh, but it's an option for you if you want to call me on my office phone. Just know that because I split time between this campus and, my, and the Richmond campus, I may not see that red light flashing on my office phone for a little while. But I will call you back if you leave me a message. Okay? All right, there are the general education uh, core objectives of the course. Notice that for both Government 2305 and Government 2306, there are four core competencies critical thinking, communication, personal responsibility, and social responsibility. I will say more about those here in just a minute when we talk about the core competency assessments. Okay? There are the student, student learner outcomes, there are eight of them for this course. By the way, both the core objectives and the student learner outcomes were not crafted by me. They are handed to us by the Texas Higher Education Coordinating Board. That's an agency of Texas government. You are in a course called Texas Government. There is an agency of Texas government called the Texas Higher Education Coordinating Board. And one of the things that they do is tell people like me that you've got to assess students on critical thinking, communication, personal responsibility, and social responsibility. It's a mandate, it's not an option. They say, you will do it, right? And they say, this is, if, if you're gonna teach a course called Texas Government, it's gotta cover these curriculum items. How many of you have the textbook already? One person, okay. All right, uh, for those of you who uh, don't have it yet, uh, there is the there are the specifics, the authors and the title of the textbook. Make sure you get the fourth edition. Every once in a while, I have students who will ask me, "Hey, can I get can I use the third edition or can I use the second edition?" And my answer to that is always, "You can do whatever you want, but just be aware that questions on quizzes are going to come from the fourth edition." And in government textbooks, that can make a difference because I'll just give you one quick illustration of that. They're generally on a two-year cycle. So when you get to the chapter on elections, for example, it's going to have the discussion is going to be centered around the results from the most recent election. So if you're using the second edition or the third edition, then that's not going to be a whole lot of use to you when you get questions on, quiz, on quizzes about that. Okay. So yeah, you really ought to get the fourth edition. You can get it at the bookstore. Um, 
I've also indicated here that you need access to a computer and the Blackboard uh, for reasons we've already mentioned to get the course documents and to turn in your core competency assessment assignments. Um, it also may be, as I suggested, even though the probability seems really low, that we might have to transition back to um, back to online if COVID becomes an unforeseen problem. Okay. All right. Uh, there's the COVID contingency statement right there. Okay. So again, you can read over all this on your own. Okay. I'm just highlighting a few things for you. Let's talk about course requirements. Any questions before we move on to the course requirements? Okay. So let's just nod right in. First thing on the list here are weekly lecture quizzes. Okay. Second thing, re weekly reading quizzes. Now, what's motivating these? As I see this course, there are two sources of the course curriculum. When I say course curriculum, I mean the information that we learn about in this course. Okay. One source of the course curriculum is the textbook. The authors of that textbook are well-educated political scientists, and I think they bring a lot to the table. They have some expertise to bring to bear, and they share that with you in the pages of that textbook. The other source of the course curriculum, if I can be so bold to put myself in their company, is me. Okay? I also have some fairly extensive background, educational background in political science and economics for that matter. Right? And I'd like to think that I have something to offer too. I bring something to the table. And I don't use the Tuesday, Thursday class sessions, the lecture discussion sessions, to read to you from the textbook. You can read on your own. Right? So one of the things that you'll discover is while there is clearly going to be some overlap between what we talk about in class and the information that's presented in the textbook, it's not identical. You know the worst college course I ever took in my entire life? It was a long, long time ago, but I can still remember. And I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings or offend anybody. So don't go tell one of my colleagues that this is general. I think this is generally true, but it was a sociology course. And the professor would come to class. I don't remember if it was a Tuesday, Thursday, or Monday, Wednesday, Friday, whatever. But he would, he would come to class every day with his textbook, and he would open up the textbook and put it on the table in front of him, and he would read to us from the textbook. And I said, I can read myself. <laughs> you don't need to read from the textbook. I just, you know, it was, I'll tell you what my favorite classes were from when I was undergraduate, but I'll also tell you what my least favorite classes were. That sociology class was probably my least favorite course. My favorite course was microeconomics. Anyway, I'm not going to read to you from the textbook. In fact, you're going to discover that while there's clearly some overlap between the stuff that I bring to the table and the stuff that the authors of the textbook bring to the table, there's also some differences. They cover some things pretty well. I don't think I necessarily have much to add to what they brought. They cover some things not so well or not at all. Maybe those are things that I elaborate in class. Or even the things that we're talking about, they're saying I may have a different perspective than they have. Maybe even down to the way I define the term is a little bit different than the way that the authors of the textbook define it. By out of the gate, you're going to discover that's true because one of the first topics on the syllabus is a topic on public policy. And the way that they talk about public policy and the way that I talk about public policy is not identical. You're going to, you're going to pick up on that. Pretty quick, you probably would have on your own, but now that I've mentioned it, you'll probably be looking for it. Yeah. So, so if like, we were to come across like, information like that, how would I identify which one to know and then which one? Because you're going to know whether you're going to be taking a lecture quiz or a reading quiz. Yeah. That up? Yep. I, I like to try to, I, you know, I like to, because I see the, the two different sources of course curriculum, I like to keep the quizzing separate because I don't want you to be confused. If they have a definite, one definition of a term or one explanation of a concept, 
and I have something that's a little bit different I don't want to do. So what about the exams, like anything like the information on calculus makes it like more standard? We don't take exams in this course except for the final exam. Oh really? Nope. We haven't got that far yet, but uh, you'll see, right? I'm sorry, I that's a, no, it's okay. I, I, it, it is perfectly understandable that you would anticipate having to take exams. Yeah. We are testing you, but it's on a week-to-week -week basis. It's smaller bits of information rather than larger bits of information. Right. And by the way, this is the first semester I've ever done this where I haven't had unit exams, you know, like four <laughs> unit exams or something like that. But I decided to experiment a little bit this semester, and I'm hoping that it not only will take a little bit of the pressure off of you, but also make it easier for you to process information in smaller increments rather than larger increments. So you feel like the information is going to stay in a little bit. I hope. Yeah. Well, see, you're, you're going to give me some feedback on that, I hope, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, we're committed to doing it now in this semester, but at the end of the semester, or maybe as we go along, you know, you can, you can tell me. You know, I, this, this works a lot better, or this doesn't work as well, as I hope. Yeah. Yes, sir. Oh, I was just going to say, I probably paid a lot more attention to this than the kind of curriculum that we had before. I hope. Well, again, you know, here's the thing. People learn in different ways, and it may work out very well for you. It may not work out as well for somebody else. But I'm hoping on balance there'll be a benefit to doing it this way, and I'm not wedded to doing it this way in perpetuity, but for this semester. Okay? That's why I want some feedback from you as we go along and at the end of the semester on how you think that works. Okay? So here's what's going to happen with the lecture quiz. I'm going to skip ahead here, and we're going to look at the topical syllabus. Everybody online still with me? Okay, good, thank you. That's at least one. Okay, good, thank you. All right, so for those of you online, this part's going to be a little bit different. The timing of quizzes is going to be a little bit different. I'm talking specifically to the face-to-face -face people now, okay? For those of you online, you're going to have to just check your syllabus, okay? Here's how this works. It's set up so that I hope it's clear, but uh, one thing I discovered over all the years that I've been doing my job at one place or another is that just because something is clear to me, the way I put it together doesn't necessarily mean that it's clear to you. So you're going to have to ask if this is not as clear as I think it is, or that I intend for it to be. Okay? I want you to jump ahead to week number two. Okay? Because week number one is an exception. We don't have a reading quiz this week. We don't have a lecture quiz this week. We don't have discussion boards this week. <clears throat> Those graded things begin in week two. Okay? But notice it says week two lecture quiz Tuesday. January the 26th, one week from today, you're going to come in and probably first thing right out of the gate, right when that alarm goes off, we're going to take that lecture quiz. It's going to be 10 multiple choice questions based on the lecture material that we cover in week one. Today, and particularly on Thursday, because who knows how far we're going to get today with it, right? Come in next Tuesday expecting Electric quiz, yes, sir. And I assume it's going to be online and not like a paper. No, no, it'll be in the face to face classes. In the online classes, they do it online. In the face to face classes, you're going to have to bring uh, a stand front form. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 By the way, I'm glad you asked that because I probably I didn't think to say this in the, in the uh, 1050 class. Uh, I need to remember to do that because I'm on Thursday. Uh, you need to get the quiz strips that have. 15 items on them. I think they sell them in like packets of 10 or something like that. So you need several packets for everything we're doing this semester. Wait, Sorry about that. Trips, so we get our own, we have to go buy our own scantrums? Yes. Okay. And which, do you want to get scantrums or quiz strips, like you said? Well, scantrum is a brand. It's like, you know how people say Coke and they're really drinking a yeah. Dr. Pepper? Right? Scantrum is a brand name. I'm not sure what the brand name is that they sell over there, but they're, they sell several different quiz strips or scantron forms, one of them, the ones that we need for quizzes this semester, have 15 items on one side and the other side is blank. I'll try to remember to bring one with me on, uh, on uh, Thursday. Hold on a second. There'll be a momentary pause while I do a quick search.
Here it is. Uh, in the bookstore. So that's what it looks like. They don't. I don't know. I thought I saw it. Looks like I should go down and check. I just I don't know the answer to that. Yeah. Uh, and I see. And you can get them on Amazon. Okay, so there you have the you have the form number right there. Is what you need. What does that say? Eight fifteen E. And I assume you want to get like full trans as well. Or? No. No. That's all you need. You need a bunch of them. Okay. Because we got fourteen lecture quizzes and we've got fourteen reading quizzes. Yes. I, and I think they sell like 10 to a Mac. You said they're on Amazon? Yeah, Amazon one, they sell like 100, 100, well, 75 hundred. Okay. So notice again, what I'm saying is, I think this is probably what you need right here, this, this form number 815E. Is that a 5 or a 6? I can't really see. Yeah, 815E. Okay, and again, it has 15 items on the front, and then the black, the yeah. back side is blank. Books on Amazon for a hundred. Go in halvesies with some with a classmate. You also order out the books because it has the site name on the table. You can order what? Yeah, will, Say that again. You order it because it has their site name. I would think probably so. I don't know the answer to that for sure. I don't know if they just do like wholesale or if they sell, you know. Uh, but I, I, I bet you can. I bet you can get uh, the bookstore down in uh, Richmond or what to ship them to you. Yeah. you. Can you pull the uh, exams scantron up because I need it for uh, a. Okay, real quick, but I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna leave it up there very long because we've got to move along. Okay. Eight eight two e. We're not using this in this class, okay? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, so. Let me get back on track here. So you come in on Tuesday, a week from today, January the 26th, and you're going to expect a lecture quiz. What is that lecture quiz going to quiz you over? The stuff that we talked about in class this week. And then two weeks from today, week three, on February the 2nd, you're going to come in expecting a lecture quiz, and that's going to quiz you over the stuff that we cover next week, <coughs> week two. Is the way that this is set up clear enough? Like I said, it's clear to me, but I want it's got to be clear to you. So, like, yeah. Okay. How many questions are you going to expect to see on the lecture quizzes? And what's the format? Not on the lecture quizzes. The lecture quiz is multiple choice. Okay. All right. Now there are going to be Week 2 through week 15, so that's a total of 14 quizzes, right? I'm going to drop the lowest four scores. So that means your highest 10 scores are going to count on the lecture quizzes. That's a lot of drops, by the way, on quizzes. I doubt that if we were doing a unit exam, that would happen. Okay? Anyway, there were 2% each, so 2 times 10 is 20% of your course grade. And the reason I'm making that point about the arithmetic is because I'm worried a little bit about not you doing unit exams with this low point value on individual quizzes. I worry about someone, no one here, I'm sure, but maybe not taking it as seriously as they should. Oh, it's only 2% of the course grade, no big deal. So think about them all together. 20% is a big deal. 20% of your course grade is a big deal. You don't want to be making 40s and 50s, you know, and 60s on these. You want to be making 80s, 90s, and 100s on these. Okay? Now, very similar sort of thing with the reading quizzes. These are going to be on Thursdays. When you come in on the Thursday, one week from Thursday, Notice you have a reading quiz, and that quiz is you over the reading material for week one. What was the reading material for week one? Oh, it's something called 
a public policy primer part one, which is a document, it's not even in the textbook yet, but it's a document that I wrote and I'm going to link up for it on the Blackboard course, Blackboard course website. Okay? So you're going to read over that and then a week from Thursday on the 28th, you'll come in and expect your first reading quiz. Now, what about for week three? What? On Thursday, February the 4th, if you have a reading quiz, what is that quiz you're over? Oh, Public Policy Primer Part 2 and Public Policy Primer Part 3. There are three parts to that. Again, still not even into the textbook yet. So, if you're thinking, I don't know, for whatever reason, can I wait to get my textbook? At least a couple of weeks you can wait. Yeah. I'd worry about you know, selling out, you know, like bookstore selling out or something like that. So I might not encourage you to do that. But we don't get into the textbook in this course until week three. Okay? Any questions? Oh, no, we do have a few pages. I'm sorry. We have a few pages right here in week two. That will be quizzed on week three. Quiz. Handful of pages, like five pages. Any questions about how those lectures, oh, by the way, those are true-false, 10 true-false statements, okay? 14 of them, weeks 2 through 15, drop the lowest 4, count the highest 10, 2 percentage points each, 20 percentage, now we're up to 40 percent of your course grade. So just quizzing, so just both yes, okay. so just quizzing, lecture quizzes and reading quizzes, is a huge chunk of your course grade, forty percent of your course grade. Questions about that? All right, here's another twenty percent of your course grade. Weekly discussion posts. Remember, I have a document out there for you under course documents called Instructions for Weekly Discussion Posts. You need to read over that document. I think it will become a lot clearer to you when you read that document, but I'm going to give you a quick overview of how that works. We cover material beginning in week two. We're obviously going to cover material this week too, but beginning in week two, whatever material that we cover in class in week two is subject to this discussion board. Okay? So based on the material that we cover in class in week two, on Friday of week two, you have your first discussion board that opens at 12 a.m. on Friday. That's the stroke of midnight, Thursday night, Friday morning. January 28th, 29th, that, that stroke of midnight, when you go from Thursday to Friday, the discussion board opens. And you will go to the discussion board and you will look for your name. And when you find your name, you'll see that a, what I call a versus pair is attached to your name, is, is assigned to your name. It'll say, what is your first name? Miles. Miles. It'll, uh, Miles, I'm sorry, what's your last name? Busby. 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 Miles Busby. Uh, evaluation versus agenda setting. And you will, based on information that was presented in lecture discussion, you'll write me at least one sentence, or you'll write for the discussion board at least one sentence that explains what evaluation is, at least one sentence that explains what agenda setting is, and then at least the third sentence that explains why these two are paired together. What's the connection between the two? Okay? And the reason I like this type of writing assignment is because I think it, it provides an opportunity for students to, be, to begin to think about how things are interrelated. I think in a lot of college courses there's too much emphasis on learning or memorizing disparate facts or definitions. In this course, I don't think it's unique to this course, but I think it's certainly true with this course, I think the real learning begins to take place when we begin to see how things are interconnected. 
how this thing is connected to that thing. And that's why I use that term versus. It doesn't mean that they're opposites of one another or that they're somehow opposed to one another. It may be complementary terms, but I want you to tell me what that connection is between the two. So you can do that in a minimum of three sentences. The, the pair that you're assigned to, Matthew, I'm sorry, Miles. Miles. I'm sorry, Miles. <laughs> I apologize. I'll get that right pretty soon. The pair that you're assigned to, Miles, or that you are assigned to, uh, Kyle, or that you're assigned to, Jerry, uh, each of you, okay, that is called the primary post. You're the primary participant. You're explaining for the benefit of your classmates based on the way that we talked about these things in class, not based on any other source of material. Don't go out and Google the term. I will nail you. I will be merciless because I'll know when you do that. Okay? And it's not because I'm not, the point is I'm not trying to see if you can do things and then copy and paste things. Okay? I'm trying to see if you understood this information as it was discussed in class. Not as it was discussed in the textbook, if it was discussed in the textbook. Okay? How it was discussed in class. Okay, so that's the primary post. Then what do you think you have to do? You, would, you guys have done these discussion boards before, right? Well, then what do you have to do? Respond. You, you read your classmates' posts, and you pick one to respond to. Okay, that's right. And what you're trying to do with that secondary post is flush out some more information. I don't want to see this stuff on the discussion board like, great post, you know, good job. I'm all for you know, reinforcing each other and affirming each other, but that can't be the extent of the, the secondary post. I, I, I really I don't want you to think that I'm going to you know, be mean to you if you say good post. That's okay, say that, but don't just leave it at that. I want you to, at a minimum, um, if the primary participant left something out, or didn't explain things quite right. You're not grading their work. You're trying to promote better understanding for your classmates of these concepts, right? So think about it like you're in a discussion group, an actual like a study group or something. And one of the pre one of the people in the study group says, "Oh, wait a minute, now that was defined as," and you say, "No, no, no, that's not how it was defined in class. That's okay to do that. That's okay to do that on these discussion boards." Be civil about it, right? We're not going to troll each other, okay? But, you know, we, we want to promote better understanding of these concepts, okay? You can ask questions, right? You can bring stuff in that wasn't discussed in the class lecture, but not at the expense of covering how it was discussed in this class lecture. You know what I mean? If you want to add something to it, that's fine. If you know about something related to this, you want to break that in front, but don't fail to do the basic part, which is flush out the way that we discussed in class. Yes, sir. Oh, I was just asking, uh, some teachers like require us to make sure that we only reply like a certain amount to one person, or like how many times we reply. Well, yeah. you're only going to do one primary post and one secondary post. Okay. Yeah, that's all you're going to be great on. If you want to do more than that, that's fine. Understand that you're not going to be great on it, but there is value to doing that because, again, what we're trying to do is promote some understanding of material. So if you want to post three or four times a week, you can do that, okay? But I'm only going to grade you on a primary and a secondary post. And as much, as, as much information as you can elaborate, all the better, okay? The main criteria, though, is that you discuss these concepts in the context that they were discussed in class session. When, when do they close? Okay, so you have 24 hours for the primary post and 24 hours for the secondary post. So um, that means on, on uh, Friday, when you're doing the primary post, you have until 11.59 p.m. And I, even though some people want to jump on and immediately do that secondary post, I'm going to suggest to you that you might want to just wait so that everybody who's going to do a primary post has had an opportunity to do this. And then 
you have until 11.59 the next day, Saturday, to post the secondary post. Yes, sir. Um, I noticed that um, last semester in the uh, federal government when I did uh, the online. Were you in my class? Yeah. Yeah, I apologize. It's just when people are in my online classes, I don't necessarily, you know, get to know them by their phone. We were doing the discussion folks, I noticed that we also had a tertiary response, response to you. I'm getting soft. Dropping that. Dropping that. Yeah, he's right. Last semester, I was requiring three posts a week primary, secondary, and tertiary. But are you disappointed? No. <laughs> we could change it real quick. <laughs> okay. No, yep, just going to ask you to do the two this time. Uh, I'm hoping by doing that we can get more concise and less sort of rambling uh, discussion threads. Okay. Questions about those? So 14 of those, weeks 2 through 15, the low score dropped. That means 10 are counted. They're worth 2% each. 10 times 2 is 20. Now we're up to 60% of your course grade. All right. All right, next are core competency assessments. What well, time gets away so fast. I apologize. Let me, let me try to hurry along here, OK? Um, core competency assessments. We have four core competencies, as I said, critical thinking, communication, social responsibility, personal responsibility, OK? I kind of think that what I've been doing my entire illustrious professorial career is assessing students on critical thinking and perhaps communication. There's rich communication. Uh, the Texas Higher Education Coordinating Board wants something more formal, something less nebulous, I guess. So what they've said is we have to have some sort of assessment instrument to assess you on each of those four. So we can do double up. We can do two core competencies on one assessment. Can't do three, can't do four on one assessment. Can only do two, right? So last semester we had four of them on the unit exams, right? This semester we're just going to have two exercises. And uh, the first one is on critical thinking or, or assesses you on critical thinking and communication. It's an assignment that deals with the Texas Constitution. So it's related to the curriculum of the course. And then the second one is on personal and social responsibility. And that's an assignment that deals with the Texas Democratic Party and the Texas Republican Party's platform. Right? I'm going to have documents out there for you, as I said a few minutes ago or earlier. Hopefully by the end of the day tomorrow. My goal is by the end of the day tomorrow. That will give you exact information about how, you, how you're going to do these assessments. Okay, and the due dates are provided both here and at the end on the schedule. And will, we, will we take those in class? No, this is something you do outside of class. So notice that the first one, assessment one, is due on by, no later than 11.59 on Saturday, February the 27th. And you can do that online? You, you will turn it in online on Blackboard. Okay. And then the second one, I think that's the end of week six, if I remember correctly. And then the second one is due Saturday, April the 17th. That's the social responsibility and personal responsibility. That's the end of week 12, I think. Yeah, the first one is due here at the end of week six, February the 27th. And the second one is due at the end of the week 12. Yeah, it, goes towards it does. Each one is worth 5% of your course grade. So together they're worth 10% of your course grade. Now we're up to 70% of your course grade. Okay. What do you think the remaining 30% of your course grade is? Final exam. Final exam. We do have a comprehensive departmental final exam in this course. It's multiple choice format, 50 questions. The date and the time for the final exam for this face-to-face -face class is at the bottom of the syllabus for the online classes. For those of you who are still with me, it's at the bottom of your syllabus. It's the last thing on this document. 
Okay, that's set by the by the college. Okay, notice that the start time is a little bit different. Okay, you will be accustomed to coming to this classroom at 12:15 on Tuesdays and Thursdays. We get down to Thursday, May the 13th, when you take the final exam. It's a little bit later starting time. Okay, that's 50 multiple choice questions based on the entire course. And remember, I have that document out here for you under final exam information that provides you with some guidance. I hope useful guidance to help you manage that material as we go through the semester. All right, questions about your course requirements? Any questions about course requirements? So, 100 points maximum can be earned in this course. When it comes time for me to enter course grades at the end of the semester, I just use that grading scale right there, very mechanically, unemotionally. Whatever point total you have, where it fits on that scale, that determines your course grade. Okay, the rest of the stuff you can read on your own. Uh, this basically says, there are no makeups on anything in this course. <laughs> Why? Well, because we let you drop the four lowest reading quiz scores. We let you drop the lowest four uh, lecture quiz scores. We let you drop the lowest four uh, 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 discussion board posts. Uh, you have six weeks to do core competency one, another six weeks to do core competency two, an entire semester. Well, the college policy governs on the final exam. College policy says they have to take it when it's administered. Read over these sections. Technology and out, uh, technology outage and contingency plans. Policy regarding electronic gadgets in the classroom. That's what I said at the very beginning of today's class session. Turn off your cell phones when you come in. You can have a laptop or a tablet if you're using it for class purposes, if you're surfing the internet. Do people use that term anymore, surfing the internet? Nobody uses that anymore, do they? If you're browsing, you are distracting the people around you. You're distracting me. And most importantly, you're distracting yourself. So don't do that in class. I'll evict your device right but you can if you want to bring it in to take notes you know stuff that we're working on in class perfectly fine to do that okay do you have any question attendance policy I don't I don't uh, add points to anybody's score for good attendance I don't subtract any points for poor attendance I think that shows up in your grades anyway obviously you're quizzing every Tuesday and Thursday on something, so if you're missing too many of those, you're going to get in trouble. Right? Um, if you're missing more than four classes a semester anyway, that's in, in a class like this, you know, in a, in a Tuesday, Thursday class, two days a week, that's, you're, you're, we used to call that in the old days, I was at Temple College for many, many years, and we had something called the excessive absence policy where students could be dropped by the administration for excessive absences. We don't have that here at WCWC. Some colleges and universities have that. We don't have that here. But that was defined at Temple College, that was defined as three or more class sessions. That wasn't that long ago. What else? Questions? Ten multiple choice questions. Ten multiple choice questions on the lecture quizzes. Ten, ten, on the reading. ten true false questions on the reading quizzes. We'll use the same form for both the reading quizzes and the lecture quizzes. What else? Not your only opportunity to ask, but it's a good opportunity to ask. Because we are going to hit the ground running right out of the gate on Thursday. We didn't get the cover to, uh, material in today's class meeting, so I got a hustle on Thursday. All right. We'll see you guys Thursday.